Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to model a 10 meter long underground cable in EM2P. Uh, if this uh, tutorial was helpful for you, do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. Um, this is basically the cable that we want to model in uh, EMTP and uh, let's switch to EMTP and see how that works. So I'm going to create a new project uh, from the left side and file new design EMTP default design and create. So on the uh, right side uh, I'm going to choose the cable data from lines cable data here so double click on that and create a new cable case okay so i'm going to create a single core cable uh, i have three phases and uh, each phase has two conductor why uh, because here you can see that we have one core an insulator around that, a sheath, and an insulator around that one as well. So core and sheath are both conductors. So I have two conductors for my cables. So number of conductors is two. So what is the vertical distance between the phases? Um, so for this one, I'm going to consider the uh, simplest uh, condition. How? And here. Let's show how I'm going to consider that. So assume that this is my uh, three-phase cable. And uh, for EMTP, you're always going to have to define a reference for uh, your measurements. So this is my reference. And um, I'm going to assume that Uh, the distance between my uh, first phase and the reference is, uh, say for example, one meter. Okay, and the and the um, uh, distance between uh, the second phase and the First phase is, for example, um, 30 centimeters. So it's going to be this much, 0 0.3 meters. And the same for the other one, other phase. OK, so here. Now the distance uh, between the first phase uh, and the reference is 1 meter, and the distance between the uh, second phase and the reference is uh, 1.3 meters and for the uh, third phase it is uh, 1.6 meters and also I'm going to have to define another reference for the um, uh, for the distance that they have from the ground and uh, this distance as you can see is uh, equal for all of them and I'm Assuming that all of my cables are placed at uh, three meters or above the ground, so it's gonna be three meters for here. Okay. Yeah, that's all. I just wanted to show it like this. Yeah, this is three meters. So let's go back here. Uh, the vertical distance is 1 for the first phase, 1.3 for the second phase, and 1.6 for the third phase. And horizontal distance, oh, sorry, vertical distance, I just uh, confused those. So vertical distance is 3 meters above the ground for all of them. I should have entered those data for here. Yeah, this is 1. 1.3 and 1 1.6. Uh, so what is the outer insulation radius? And um, 
uh, what this means is that let's go back to our data here outer insulation is insulator 2 and the radius is dcc so let's uh, check what is the value for dcc here okay 0 uh, point 0 uh, 4965 meters so I'm gonna enter this data for all of them here because I assume that all of my cables are uh, identical and uh, same for the other faces as well okay so let's go back to the other table here um, this shows the cable number over here so I have uh, uh, assumed that for each cable there are two conductors one is the a core conductor and the other one is the sheath so inside radius for the first conductor what is the radius for the first conductor it is DCIC right and what is the value for DCIC uh, let's check okay this is the value uh, 0.007 And uh, what is the value for the second conductor, which is sheath? Um, where is sheath? The black line over here. And the inside is should be the CIS, right? And uh, the value for it is zero, uh, point zero, uh, four two, four five. So um, for the other phases, we are going to have the same uh, uh, values as well because, uh, as I told before, we assume that uh, the um, our phases are identical. So I'm gonna just copy this from here to here and here. And copy this data from here, here, and here. Okay. And what is the outside radius for the first conductor? Let's check. This is my first conductor. What is its uh, outside radius? It should be DCOC. So basically, with this manner, EMTP is uh, going to calculate what is the uh, width of my insulators, what is the width of my um, conductors, and so on. So this is the outside outside radius for um, the insula uh, for the core. This is the COC. Where is that? Okay, here. Um, point zero point zero um, two eight nine five. Let's enter that here. Um, what is the outside radius for my sheath? Let's check here. This is sheath and outside radius is DCOS, right? Okay, where is that? DCOS um, 0 uh, 0.04515 and I'm going to copy this data for other cables as, uh, for other phases as well so it's going to be here and here and this one is going to be here and here okay so what is the resistivity for um conductor and sheet let's check that resist core resistivity is uh, this value so i'm going to enter that over here okay minus 8 
and uh, the resistivity for the sheath is uh, this value over here. So I'm going to insert that over there. So that's going to be. Uh, let's copy this data for other uh, phases as well. Okay, what is the relative permeability for my um, conductors? Relative perme so permeability for core sheath insulation and cover literally everything is one. So just uh, enter that value over here. And um, insulator relative permeability is also one. So I think that everything is one for my case. Okay, insulator relative permittivity. Uh, let's check that one. Relative permittivity for permittivity for insulation is uh, three point four. Uh, for the insulation, insulator 1, and for cover, which is insulator 2, uh, the permittivity is 3.5. So let's just enter that over here. So this one is going to be 3.4, and this one is 3.5. And same goes for here. Um, and what is the insulator loss factor? So I have no data for that over here. Uh, I'm going to assume a very small number for that. And let's assume 0 0.001. And what is the phase number? So, uh, for example, well, here I have three three phases, and if I number them from one to three, like this, uh, this is totally wrong because these two are inside one phase, so they're going to have the same value because they are inside the same phase. Okay. Also, I can uh, determine here if the sheath is grounded. So if the sheath or any conductor is grounded here, I'm going to set the value 0 for it. Uh, 0 means that this conductor is grounded. So here I don't want to assume that any of my conductors are grounded, so I'm going to uh, give each of them a value. And that's it. Let's go to the next level from the top. And I'm going to select the FD model, which means frequency dependent cable model, which means that the parameters of the cables uh, is going to change the, uh, when the frequency changes in the system. You can uh, you can also choose constant parameters, which means that uh, the uh, parameter values won't change uh, when the uh, frequency changes in the system. But here I'm going to choose this one, and. Um, and here I'm going to choose FDQ because I have uh, um, no data of what my model frequency is going to be or um, anything of anything like that. So um, yeah, that's all here. And I have no data for uh, things over here too. So I'm just going to let them be whatever they are. And what is my cable length? So cable length, uh, I'm assume that my cable length is 10 meters so this is um, the uniform it is a kilometer so I'm going to have to change that uh, convert that to meters and 10 meters is going to be this much first the resistivity I'm just not going to touch these values because I have no data for them so if you have any data for any of these uh, options here, you can enter your own data. Output options. So I'm going to uh, choose three over here, which means that um, 
my output file uh, contains uh, any messages any data and yeah simply everything and yes that's all let me check okay if you want these values you can also um say for example show the z value like this and this let's choose these all as well okay so what is the um uh, file name so let that be just table x that's fine for me and run this case to create a model data for the z uh, cable model so yeah that's all press ok and we are going to get a error message what's that oh it's okay it says that you should first save your root folder then yeah that's it so let's run it again Um, so here I get another error message. I know what's the problem. So number of holes is too little. So let's change the number of holes. Um, from here, yeah, maximum number of holes in the model. I'm going to set that to 99, for example. You can also print holes and zeros and anything you want from here too. So let's run it again. I think this should be yeah that worked fine and I mean kind of um so I have to adjust this so you can see clearly yeah the process ended um successfully and my output file was created so and the last step is getting the FDQ line model from here because I model the FDQ line. And yeah, this is the FDQ line. Go and select the data file for it and my data file what cable X. So choose that one. And yes, number of phases is three. Um that's all. So as you can see, uh, there's an error for relative path usage. Oh, that's fine. That's not an important error. So let's just unclick this so that issue is solved. Let me choose my file again. And yeah, that's all. And our um, line is modeled. And uh, also, guys, I need to cite that I got my uh, data uh, cable data from this paper over here and uh, if you need any further information about how this uh, cable was modeled or where this uh, data belongs you can refer to this uh, uh, paper over here and uh, get any uh, further information thank you very much for watching this tutorial and see you in the next tutorial